Hello everyone and welcome to another high low game of Age of Empires. Today hit pause on your blockbuster DVD rental of Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Pop in that burned Eiffel 65 CD, grab that Coca-Cola Surge, and join me for a classic 1999 OG battle as Huang, playing as the Saracens in red, takes on the Viper, playing as the Teutons in blue. Now while the players heard their hurdles explore their immediate crusted cracked surroundings and try to get their butts up to castle age because we're in empire wars as soon as possible why don't we take a look at the civ matchup that we are going to be watching today you know, the saracens are a civilization whose cheaper market and lowest commodity trading fee in the game means they can potentially afford lots and lots of their powerful units very early on their foot archers come with an attack bonus against buildings their camels come with 25 percent more hp their Trebs and Mangonel line units can be upgraded to get a 15% attack boost, and their unique unit is the Scimitar Throwing Cavalry Killing Machine that we like to call the Mameluke. Now to keep their armies alive as long as possible, the Saracens can upgrade their monks to automatically and passively heal all friendly units nearby. Pivoting to the eastern part of the map, we've got the Tudens, a brawler civilization. All units from their barracks and stables come with free extra melee armor in Castle and Imperial, they can upgrade their siege units to get a big melee armor boost, and their unique unit is the heavily armored Teutonic Knight, a super slow but ridiculously powerful infantry unit. Now both Teutonic Towers and their town centers come with extra garrisoning room, and the Teutons get both the murder holes and the herbal medicine upgrades free of charge, so their units can heal lightning fast while protected inside their powerful castles, which by the way can be upgraded to fire extra arrows when garrisoned by infantry units and get a plus three attack bo uh, range boost. Now speaking of healing, Teutonic Monks can heal injured units from twice the distance than normal. Now, economically, the Teutons should have no problem feeding their big militaristic population since their farms come in at 40% discounts. Those are the two civilizations as Huang uh, hides his unit here in the back of the base as the Viper begins exploring the forward position of his opponent's base. We are on cliffbound yet again. Socotra meets Maze Runner, where the resources are not quite as scarce at you as you'd think they are. The usual 8,400 stone, but 25,000 gold. All of it here in the, well, I shouldn't say all, most of it here in the center on cracked terrain. Remember, any structure built on cracked terrain whose center point touches any of this takes 20% more damage when it gets attacked. Looks like we've got a bit of a scuffle here developing in the forward position of Huang's base. Huang, by the way, practicing more and more and more with the Saracens, I suspect, because he likes to use that market to hit the castle age at the four and a half minute mark of the game. The Viper, though, without that feature, still managed to be not too far behind his opponent. And now the Viper is circling, trying to find a way to get into this base. But Huang looks like he's uh, plugged up all the various gaps on these beautiful acacia trees here. No kills yet as the players continue kind of just chasing each other around the map. Lots of confused zebras running this way, running that way. Not too sure what's going on. And Huang in castle, do I see a siege workshop? I do not. I see a whole bunch of archers. Now remember, these units do come with an attack bonus. Where are you? There you are. Against building plus three, which means they are pretty darn good at taking down infrastructure, especially when, remember, they deal 20% more bonus, or rather 20% more damage on any unit, for example, like this monastery, who looks like its center point is touching the cracked terrain. Viper's still trying to bust in through the north here, Huang moving forward, but it looks like the first kill of the game going to our Saracen, who managed to catch out that Spearman, who got the kill, definitely not the scout, probably one of these guys, yep, the crossbowmen who are now getting shooed away by the Teutonic Monks. So the Viper anticipating some kind of, perhaps, siege play has already got a monastery out, rather two monasteries out, and probably very, very happy that he does not have to research redemption and pay all of that gold. And he's probably pretty darn happy he's facing archers. And what has he got himself? A siege workshop alone. Nothing quite yet being trained out of it. And the monks? The monks say, we see your seven range. We'll raise you two. And we have nine range. So get the hell out of here. Huang, with ballistics, by the way, should be able to get this scout, get a uh, third kill. He's already gotten that villager that we saw here. He already so got the spearman we saw oh look at that i uh, clicked on it right away over here and now we'll see what he can accomplish 
Might as well attack this monastery, do a little bit of extra damage with the cracked terrain. By the way, the Viper is still trying to bust in through the north of the base. Perhaps the slowest attack as a conversion gets missed by yours truly. But former teammates turn on that unit, kill him, and now Huang has three kills to zero. But a Mangonel might change that in the blink of an eye. It might be three to three in a second if Huang isn't careful. Four monks are out, a fifth being trained for the Viper. He wants no part of this. He wants actually all part of this. He wants to make everything that Huang has his own. What are you to the south here? You're just a very scared scout cavalry unit for the Teutons. Remember, that's about as good as they get in terms of light cavalry. The Teutons notorious for their lack of light cavalry progression. That Teutonic scout, even though if you take a look, zero plus one with no armor researched, that is the cool feature. So they do come with a little bit of extra armor, which makes them a little bit better than your generic scout, but still not great. Monk to the left, monk to the right, both gathering relics. Looks like uh, the Viper already has one relic. And he's going to have, in a second, three relics. Now, the problem for him, if it even is a problem, is his monasteries are very forward-facing. Huang, for the moment, he himself is getting redemption. So what a uh, complete flipping of the script here. What's the uh, famous ridiculous line from The Office when uh, Michael Scott says, oh, how the turntables have... And then I think he just pauses. That is exactly what's happening here. Huang is getting sieged, and so he finds himself in need of redemption. Although, does he have any monks? No, he's training his first monk. Unfortunately for him, three of the five relics on the map are already spoken for. Another conversion for the Viper. Two more kills for the Viper. And like I said, in the blink of an eye, siege can absolutely change the entire dynamic of a game. And he gets, I think, three more. So five total kills here for that Mangonel. A conversion, a bunch of conversions on the whole. And even though the kill count is 10 to 7, that doesn't factor in the converted units. I think in to terms of just plain units lost, I think the players are sitting on the exact same 10 units lost. Monk is healing. If he had Bamaristan, that incredible, incredible upgrade, which I presume is built or rather was designed primarily to help the Saracen Archer line units uh, since they have, number one, a pristine Archer line and their Arbalests are pretty darn squishy as all Arbalests are, to have a monk that heals 75 HP a minute. Can you imagine an injured Arbalest, a group of them like this, just all individually being healed up at 75 HP per minute? That's pretty damn bonkers. It is a crazy upgrade, okay? Mangonel and a monk for a crossbow is an absolute fantastic trade there for Huang. He now uses his scout to try to get this Mangonel, but Teuton Tower with no fewer than 10 villagers instead of the usual five. And by the way, the same applies to their town centers, which have 25 garrison space instead of the usual 15. A super cool feature. The Teuton's full of unique, unique features. I mean, all the civs are, but in general, you know, a little bit of extra armor here, a little bit of extra armor there. It's kind of the same thing, but the Teutons, really, the only Civ in the game with infantry adding arrows to castle, the only Civ in the game with melee armor on their siege, except for, of course, heavy scorpions, which all now come with one base melee armor. Thank you, developers, for your most recent patch. And so they do come with a few very, very unique and very, very cool features. Huang is doing a castle drop at the same time as the Viper is shoving out into the middle of the map with towers. He sees there's no siege, so towers are going to be a fantastic tool here to zone out these crossbows. Wong, I'm assuming, has shift-clicked this mining camp after the castle. And look at this, the Viper just making an absolute straight line. Get the hell out of the way, zebras. I am on a warpath, he says. He's got 800 stone as well, so he's not just looking to drop castles. Wong, where did your castle go? I guess he realized it was on cracked terrain and now places it here, which, uh, by the way, may still be. Actually, you see the center point? It is touching cracked terrain. So this is a bit of a wonky castle. One player attacking to the south going right. One player attacking to the north going left. And there's that redemption coming into play. Will he get the Manganelli? Probably will, right? Might have to risk the monk's life. Viper places down a counter castle. I'm sure that's exactly what he didn't want to do. Oh, he didn't get the conversion. Oh, no. Sour is as sour does here for our Saracen, who now loses a bunch of villagers. Five, six villagers. Oh, no. Eight total kills. Six of them villagers. 
That castle so far has gotten the most kills of anything in the game as the Viper deletes his own house. He wants as much surface area to get rid of these rams and our Saracen. I mean, he's got the food for Mamelukes. He can train Mamelukes to get rid of these rams. Remember, Mamelukes do melee damage, though it is ranged. And so these rams with negative melee armor will take an absolute pounding and die very, very quickly. Two more towers. What an absolute yin-yang situation here. One player going one way, the other going the other way, but it looks like the Saracen Castle. Ooh, and again, remember, it's on cracked terrain. So it's going down 20% faster. It's firing, firing, doing its best to take down the HP of this Teutonic Castle, which if you notice, there's no little blue line here surrounding it because they get murder holes for free, which might explain why the Teutons are one of my favorite civilizations. It looks like the Spearman abandoned his quest to destroy that house. And so the monk, I don't think uh, I saw the Viper getting redemption, so I don't think he can convert it. What is happening? What is happening right now? I see a Siege Tower and Teutonic Knights. A single Teutonic Knight comes out. Look at that base armor, and in he goes into the Ram. Seven melee armor. Now, that's not going to do very much against these Archer units, although the Pierce armor is still not bad on that unit. Okay, <laughs> Siege Tower is out. We've seen the Viper, or at least I've seen the Viper. Anyone who watches him streaming on Twitch and watches his videos on YouTube has seen him absolutely have fun with the Siege Tower. Putting in Janissaries, putting in Archer units, putting in even infantry units, and there's the Castle Drop on a map with 8,400 stone. I'm expecting a lot of Castle Drops. Another Cracked Earth Castle here for our Saracen. Although with Redemption, he should be able to convert these Battering Rams if he wanted to. Let's see where he pops out the monks. Okay, so he's trying to convert them. Siege Tower butts its head. Okay, he converts one. And look at that. He immediately attacks the other battering ram. Where are you going, Mr. Siege Tower? Full of three Teutonic Knights. So we have a uh, attempted base trade here. Very much in the favor at the moment of our Teuton, who actually has taken down the OG town center of the Saracen, who escapes rear... Rear wise, I could, I guess I could just say backwards with two town centers. Did he think this area was completely walled off? Because it is not. And so I don't even know if he needed that siege tower, although it does provide a nice little taxi, a nice little ferry for these Teutonic Knights, which are again ridiculously armored. And look at that movement speed. This is uh, elephant movement speed. Might even be slower than some elephants, to be honest. And out they pop. Now, they are not very well upgraded, just a plus one armor, and unlike a unit from the barracks, it does not come with extra melee armor. Five Teutonic Knights in here. Those three are dead. Where is the Siege Tower? Also knocked down, but and more and more towers. The Viper just playing this game, seeing that his opponent has gone for crossbows. I don't know if it was the original plan to do a tower push. I don't I'm not going to call this a rush because usually you don't place very neutral located towers in a rush. But this tower push is about as perfect as you can get when your opponent is going archer units. Oh my goodness, another crack terrain castle. I mean, just might as well place it here. It'll take less damage. Where is this guy going? Has he even explored? Yeah, he's explored this southern part of the map. Inside Huang's base, the Teutonic Knights are running amok. As slow as they are, these aren't Berber villagers, and so they still do move a little bit faster than these Saracen villagers. Our Saracen needs to really get the quantity of his army up. He's down to 11 crossbows. They are over here defending this Teutonic Knight incursion. Oh, they get the monks. Holy moly, the last... Yeah, <laughs> big surprise. The last thing you want to do against the Teutons is try to convert their units. Holy shit, the Teutonic Knight is just an absolute beast. And look at him go. Look at that cool ending animation of him thrusting his sword into this crossbowman's ass. Yikes, that is like the... Uh, was it... Who was it? Was it Edward Longshanks who got tortured like that with the hot iron, hot iron up the ass? Was it Edward Longshanks who tortured his son like that? There was some British ruler, a monarch, in the good old medieval days. You know, not, not exactly humanity's best time, but, uh, you know, what can you do? <laughs> Looking back at it in the comfort of my air-conditioned apartment. I think it was Edward Longshanks. I forget if it was done to him or if he did it to somebody else. 
but it used to be a medieval torture where they would heat up an iron rod and then, uh, you know, put it into certain orifices and just, uh, yeah, people were not as, uh, not as nice as they are today, although I don't know if people weren't as nice, but they did have a lot more mm, ways to vent their anger. Let's put it like that, especially when you were a monarch with absolutely absolute power. But what? Forget things going into orifices. <laughs> what an absolute epic, epic strategy out of the Viper. He sees no forward siege, which is Huang's usual, you know, the call sign of the like a cat burglar, burglar leaves certain telltale signs, a calling card, a uh, a little bit of kibble on the uh, in your jewelry box. That is the sign of the Huang push is the forward siege workshop. The Viper saw none of it. He didn't even see a siege workshop inside the Saracen base. And so Huang, perhaps going those crossbows with that plus three attack bonus against structures, hoping to bust his way in here. But the Viper still managed to wall him off in time, cost him a villager, cost him actually 14 villagers to the 20 of his opponent at the end of the day. But with the extra garrison space, there's no way. First of all, archers shouldn't be taking on towers, period, unless you're talking about maybe rattan archers or skirmishers or anything that has any extra powerful pierce armor but you're just basic generic crossbow with no armor whatsoever should not be taking on a tower least of all the teutonic tower with garrison room for five more villagers which i believe ooh, don't quote me on this i think it adds four extra arrows i think it's one less than the uh total villagers yeah five villagers inside or maybe five archers inside adds four extra arrows. In any event, five more units means double the normal amount of arrows. And so you should not be taking that on with this crossbow. And Huang, when he saw the Teutonic Knight transition, knew he was in trouble. I mean, he was in trouble on multiple fronts. His army is, his uh, mobile army is getting wiped out. His static settlement is getting penetrated here through the front. And how many towers did our Teuton have at the end of the day? Eight. And that is what happens, like I said. Look at that. Out of 8,400 stone, 5,000 of it is mined out. Let's see the actual numbers. Out of that 5,000, I'm really curious to see how much the Viper got. Probably, what, 4,000 of it? 30 crossbows to 20 Teutonic Knights. First of all, let's give a big thank you to the Viper for showing us the Teutonic Knight. This is not a unit you see in 99% of Teuton games. Just because, again, it is ridiculously slow, as incredibly powerful. Look at the attack. Look at the armor. And look at the HP. This is not a unit designed to go down lightly. This is a unit designed to brawl, to punch you in the face and keep punching you and your friends and your family members till you're all just a bloody mess on the floor. That is what that unit is. But unfortunately, because of the movement speed and because it's infantry, we almost never get to see this unit. So big kudos to the Viper for showing us the Teutonic Knight. PKPM right at the beginning of the game, furiously allocating, reallocating villagers for our Saracen towards the middle end of the game. And let's see the stone. What do we think about the stone? Okay, it's actually a lot closer than I thought. So 3,400 to 1,900. But look at the difference. Absolute crazy gold, basically identical. Food for our Teuton with those cheaper farms and the center control. Did he take any of the... Uh... Yeah, he's been taking the zebras as well. So the Viper just 93 villagers to 39. A dyslexic's worst nightmare absolutely crazy difference in economy this is 7600 out of uh this is what like 40 wow 40 to 45 percent bigger economy although our saracen did get more gold a little bit more wood but crazy difference in food and stone and there you go there's your two there's your teutonic knight in your castle tower push and luckily for the viper i think the castle the tower cost Woodwise has been reduced, which makes them a little bit more affordable. Not that the Teuton really needs to save on wood with those cheaper farms. Four conversions out of 39 is 10% of the Saracen army. So four crossbows, I think, were converted at the end of the day. Huang managing to get that one ram conversion. Seven buildings destroyed. And ultimately, the Viper just says, oh, you're going crossbows? Let me show you a little something. On the one hand, I'm going to absolutely wreck your crossbows with a unit that has incredible amounts of pierce armor. And inside that unit, I'm going to put this ridiculously slow, unconvertible beast of a unit. And then to the north, I'm just going to slowly create a bit of a dead zone for you. So now the entire northern quadrant of the map is no longer accessible to Huang. How the hell can he access it without taking damage on his ranged units? If he had Siege, maybe the Viper wouldn't have done this, but I think the Viper seeing the crossbows 
did the absolute perfect thing here with this incremental tower push, this Venn diagram of death, and then drops that fat Teutonic castle. No crenellations just yet for that. Uh, I think that's an Imperial Age upgrade. And so neither player, actually, Huang was an Imperial. And I'm trying to see his gold. Did he have enough maybe to go to hand cannoneers? That could have definitely helped against the Teutonic Knights. But unfortunately, neither here nor there. The destruction of the army, the conversion of 10%, the inability of Huang to get any kind of major damage done. He got 14 villager kills, but none of them were here. I think except for that one villager he got while they were hastily building the wall off. I think the rest of the villager kills were basically out on the map. And so 14 villagers kills to 20. Total kill count, not the highest game, not the longest. But look at the Viper's economy compared to Huang's. It is literally two and a half times bigger. And with that bigger economy, he can afford a lot more stone, a lot more food. And that means more castles, towers, and two tonic knights. There's actually one or two in here. This kind of looks like two units, no? I don't know what the hell that is. A bit of a weird cape situation. It is quite a flamboyant unit. Uh, and so maybe one day we'll have an Age of Empires Riz contest. And we'll see who is the most fancily dressed and who wins the awards for fashion in Age of Empires. But for sure, a unit with a cape and a big metal helmet is definitely in the top five contenders. And unfortunately for Huang, it's with that be caped unit and be helmeted unit. I don't even know if those are words. I'm just going to make them up that the Viper takes the map, both army wise and static wise, just absolutely steamrolling over the army choice of his opponent. And there is literally nothing Huang can do. Maybe he'll get two Teutonic Knights here. The rest will die. The castle isn't going up. And so he realizes, okay, now I'm dead on the front. I'm dead in the back. I got no choice. I'm down two and a half total population. Uh, actually, yeah, no, he's down more than 50% total population. I just have no choice anymore. Lives to fight another day, taps out. And it is the Viper who gets the W. But GG in a uh, pretty fun game, short as it was, to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.